Welcome back or welcome. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Tina Hurley and I'm the founder and executive director of a charity called Less Leg, More Heart. We help amputees with support, supplies, and services to improve their quality of life. And the platform that we're using today is a really exciting one because we bring stories of uh, inspiration, perspective, and also health and wellness experts to you in the comfort of your homes to help educate you on topics that we believe are important or of interest. And uh, this is gonna be a fun segment because as most of the segments, I am naive in in the field of what we're about to discuss. And I have an expert with me that's going to blow our minds and hopefully reveal some, uh, some pieces of information that could benefit uh, your understanding of the world at large and also some additional therapeutic modalities that maybe you wouldn't have been interested before in. So uh, without further ado, I have Anne Bordalo with me. Anne, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you very much, Tina. This is awesome. Yeah, Anne yeah. is a uh, licensed massage therapist. She is an energy clearer. Uh, she's an alignment expert and a medium. And we had the pleasure of connecting recently because she is putting into work her vision for creating a mobile massage um, business for veterans. And right now currently does do medical massage on veterans. It's her passion. And coming from a veteran predominant family, uh, it was really exciting for me. And then we started to talk about some of the other spiritual pieces to healing and and energy and uh, and spirits and what what all that meant and I was so excited to learn more um, and to bring that to you so I want to dig right in and you have <laughs> some cool <laughs> stories and we could ramble forever but I want to yeah. first talk about maybe like the intro 101 to to spirits or to energy or or if I was your pupil and you're talking to me like I'm a like a middle schooler, which I feel like most of the time, <laughs> <laughs> could you sort of um, explain it in a way that's palatable for uh, for us naive folks? Oh sure, sure. So um, regardless of what every what every person's spiritual belief is, we all have guides that we're that we're born with that are kind of like there to keep an eye on us, help us along our way as we're growing up. And how that manifests um, on a physical level is your intuition, so your gut instinct. Um, and then um, it's, there's, let me think how to, how to phrase that. It's basically all energy, right? And so uh, just giving us um, different clues and using our four bodies in order to be able to do that. So if we look at like your body is here and then like maybe there's like four different rings or three different rings around it, the outermost body would be your spiritual body. So that's where your, the messages start to come in. Maybe you feel a little bit something with your intuition. If you're not paying attention, then it comes down into the mental um, body still not paying attention, then it comes into the emotional body, and then the last ditch effort for your team of guides or for energy to get in touch with you is your physical body. So any kind of like aches and pains, that's your team saying, hey, there's something wrong, we've been trying to get in touch with you, you're not paying attention for whatever reason, and so now we're gonna force you to, to kind of like pay attention and listen to us through this pain. Wow. Wow. I mean, yeah. so there's so many questions, right? So it's like, yeah. I guess the first piece is, when did you know that you had a different set of abilities and how did that sort of manifest in your life and, and how were you able to cultivate that and, and how was that perceived by the circles that you have in your life to get to the point that you are today? Yeah, so I've, I've always had like these really weird things going on as a kid. Um, so I know that I, I've, I've been a medium since I was a kid, but I didn't know really what it was or how to work with it. I just knew that I had like, um, you know, there's, there's several different clairs. So like clairvoyant seeing or clairsentient, which is knowing uh, or clairaudient hearing things. Um, so I've always been clairsentient, just like knowing. I could be like, even in high school, like people would ask me, 
all right, well, what do you think about this person or whatever? And I would be, I would give them my honest opinion and then they'd be like, oh no, no, no. And then like two or three weeks later, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you were right. Or I would be like really firm on something. I would like argue until I was like blue in the face because I just, I knew I'm like this, no, this is, this is what's right. Um, because it just resonated with me so strongly. Um, so I've always kind of like paid attention to that type of intuition. Um, but it wasn't until I actually took a Reiki class um, after I got divorced and moved back to New Hampshire that everything just kind of like exploded. Even just going to like the preview um, at this at the holistic center, it's like just walking across the threshold, my hands just felt like they were on fire. And then after taking the class and getting um, opened up or getting different attunements, um, I was practicing at, at, um, on my mom and dad at their house. And I'm just like, I'm just working on my dad, you know, just hovering my hands above his body, just doing, you know, checking out the energy. And literally I saw his friend Joe, who had passed several years before, like standing in front of me. And I was like, I wasn't afraid, but I'm like, Okay, this is new. What's going? What's going on? Was he? Um, I, lots of questions to dig in, right? Yeah. And I don't want to distract you, but yeah, I could raise my hand, but <laughs> yeah. So was he like a three D image? Was it the the mystified vision that we see in movies? Like how? So I didn't necessarily like see him clearly, like I see you. For me, it sometimes will be like a flash of or like a picture or an image, okay. and so that's what I was seeing, and I'm like. Okay, but then it, it started to almost be like, I'm seeing this little movie because he's kind of like leaning over my dad and they always had fun together and they always had a lot of laughs. But then my dad started laughing while he was laying on the table, like a little schoolgirl, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Wow. And then I'm like, okay, so I'm just <laughs> trying to take this all in and what do I do with that? And then my mom got on the table after and the energy work is very relaxing. And so she was, she had her eyes closed. She was starting to fall asleep. And here's Joe again. And he's kind of like leaning over my mom and he's like, oh, you know, sleeping beauty, you know, kind of like joking with her and stuff like that. And I was like, all right, what, what's, what is this? And I did tell my parents about the experience after. And my dad's like, oh, well, next time you see Joe, tell him I said, hi. I'm like, you could have told him yourself. He was right there. So they can hear, like they, they hear you, they... Yeah, so it's it's almost kind of like um, telepathic or like um, via or like through ESP that it's like I'm just I, it's I'm understanding what it is that they're saying and it, it's basically like their energy that's communicating with my energy. And so, if a person has an energy or spirit, or is that word interchangeable? First mm -hmm. of all, yes, it is. it is. Okay. Yeah. So if someone has a spirit energy near them and you've identified it or someone else has they they can think a thought like they could say hi joe mm -hmm. just in their head and joe would know that they're acknowledged yep wow yep absolutely so a lot of times too it's like you know we could be going about our day and all of a sudden like this we really weird like random thought and especially if like you're a really positive person and like this negative thought comes in then you know that's not that's not my energy there's something else that's going on so either it's like maybe a flyby or maybe if they were in a specific place like hospitals are like rampant for because of all of the the DNA and the biology and you know the 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 death that goes on in hospitals so there's there are a lot of spirits there as well so sometimes a spirit could attach and be a hitchhiker i have so many questions yes so this, <laughs> thank you for being so open yeah. about this. so you talked about a couple of words i want to identify so you yeah. talked about flyby you talked about hitchhiker and then you talked about the geographic location of death related to the proximity of spirits yeah so i guess the first question is what is a flyby? Yeah, so it, it could mean? it could be like you're just walking and then almost kind of like instead of like two people like almost colliding, it could be like a spirit that might be just colliding with your energy. And you're getting a negative thought because the mm -hmm. the energy of the spirit is negative or 
Yes. Is that right? It okay. could be it could be a spirit or another example would be like say um, you work in an office and you've you're just getting into the office in the morning. You've had like the most awesome morning. All every single thing has been going right. Great hair day. You look awesome. The So it's like the studio producer right now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, and like all of your favorite songs on the radio as you were coming in and so you get to the office you go to get your coffee and in the break room is another person and as much as you've had um, an awesome morning they have had a really nasty morning um, and so when we're in school we're taught about our personal space right which is usually like a five foot um, um, diameter around us or radius around us and so as that person gets closer to you, now your energy fields start to blend a little bit. And now you're starting to feel a little bit icky. And it's like, well, what's going on? I felt like awesome like two minutes ago, but now I'm in the room with this person. And so it's, it's their one, their negative energy that's kind of like expanding out, but also because your energy fields have blended a little bit mm -hmm. and now you're picking up on their energy. So now if you, you kind of like can step away and be like, okay, I'm giving y'all your, your energy back. The solution to pollution is dilution. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Said Captain Planet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so always send it back with love and compassion because, you know, anything that you send out comes back to you tenfold. Yeah. So you always want it to come back good. <laughs> wow. So uh, even those for those that, like, you know, don't know a lot about this and feel a little bit uh, apprehensive to sort of accept some of the information, you can feel that difference. I know yeah. everybody has felt the presence of somebody that's just having a tough go of it yeah. and that the, the, the air feels different in the room. Really. Yes. I mean, and, absolutely. And that's also the same for people that are told that they're luminous. Like my mother is one of those people. She literally yeah. will brighten any space that she walks into. It literally feels like the shade of the room has gotten brighter yeah. and lighter. And yeah. so I know, I know the feeling of what you're saying and the, the background of that energy frequency concept is I think what a lot of folks need more education on. I yep. recently had the pleasure of talking to someone who had outlined for me, I want to say it was a Darwin scale of frequencies okay. that went yep. from like the very highest vibration, which was um, love, yeah. all the way down to like in the seven or eight hundreds or something, yep. don't quote me, uh, and then all the way down to the lowest, which was shame and was like 40. Yep. And yep. Um, it was a really cool, uh, for me, educational moment to kind of see the gradient between what the frequencies have been actually measured as, oh, which yeah. for me, again, was a random random concept. I didn't realize as a Western medicine clinician that innate objects even carried frequency and that emotion yep. carried frequency. And uh, so I'm certainly still lessening my ignorance, but I, I get what you're saying. And then the flyby concept meshing with your uh, your... What did you the, say? Yeah, the, the energy fields. Oh, yeah, energy field. It makes yep. sense. Um, and then you talked about a hitchhiker. Yes. Yeah, so a hitchhiker. So like you, you were t saying about your mom being luminous. So her, uh, so I guess to backtrack a little bit. So we are a, um, a spiritual light being in a human skin suit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So these, um, once you transmute, because energy never dies, it just transmutes into a different form. And so energy can see energy. So what, what, would, what probably happens is, so for instance, if they saw your mom, they're seeing her bright light. And so kind of like a moth to a flame, it's like, these energies now are attracted. And that's what you see. She's literally a magnet. She yes. makes friends everywhere she goes. Yes. People gravitate. Exactly. And and some people are really good at like, okay, that energy c c come is, um, comes in and it's like, and it lets, and it goes immediately. But there are some, the hitchhikers that attach and kind of like stay. And depending on... Like a barnacle. Yes, exactly. Right. Like a barnacle. And a lot of times what happens is if that spirit, for whatever reason, didn't go into the light, 
they didn't they maybe have held back or maybe wanted to stay in the shadows um, a lot of like for instance people that commit suicide are like really ashamed and they don't necessarily feel that they deserve to go into the light so they kind of like stay in the shadows a little bit until something somebody goes in or something happens and then they they're released and they can go into the light why do they attach versus uh, fly by um, they attach for because one the light um, two sometimes they may be just trying to get in touch with the person to um, ask that person for help and the um, and if the person isn't aware of that this is happening um, then then nothing happens other than um, any kind of pain then that that spirit had when they passed that can now be passed on to this this person's physical body. Wow. So just as a for instance, um, I had um, I was working in the spa, and most people know that I do energy, but I don't do I, they don't know that I do the the spirit release type stuff. Um, and I had this client. She had come in like three times already, and she had chronic issues in her shoulder. And as soon as I saw her for the first time, I'm like, and she's explaining to me what's going on. I'm like, she has a spirit that's attached to her. How did you know that? I, I just knew. I felt it. It was that intuition piece. Yep. Okay. I, 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 and, I, and I felt the energy. And I'm like, okay. And so she's now on the table. And I'm working on her shoulder. And as I'm, <laughs> as I'm working on her shoulder, I'm also telepathically communicating with this spirit to find out what's going on. Yeah, I know. That's a lot. <laughs> and ask and letting them know, hey, you know what? You're, I know that you, know, you feel like you need to be here, but you really don't because you're not helping this person. You're actually draining their energy and wouldn't you be happier to be up in the light with maybe some loved ones that have already passed? And so being able to get that spirit comfortable, sometimes they're angry um, for whatever it is. Um, so whatever whatever's going on with them and whatever their reason is for trying to stay attached to that person, um, just helping them and being compassionate and then helping them to detach and then send them off lovingly into the light. Where is the light? So what is the light? The, the light is, is, is all around us. You can call it heaven, you can call it the universe, um, you can call it basically whatever, whatever feels comfortable. Um, but it, it's, it's like, for me, I see it as just kind of like, almost like a big warehouse door with like this big beautiful golden light that's streaming out um, and so usually when um, when I help um, spirits cross um, I see like a golden staircase that magically appears and I watch them walk up to the top of the stairs and then when they get to the top they will usually turn and smile or wave or whatever um, sometimes I see like um, the family members coming out to greet them um, I had one gentleman that I, when I used to work in the nursing home um, that had passed and he and his wife were dancers, ballroom dancers, and she had passed many years before. So when he crossed over, then she came out to greet him and they just kind of like danced together in the light. Oh, and wow. yeah, and it was beautiful to watch. I have uh, anecdotally a lot of stories from uh, I shared time with a lot of combat wounded veterans down in Texas as mm -hmm. part of a training program. And a large number of them had very similar specific recollections of when they either had died or were very near death. Yep. And usually they, they did die at least for a period of time, flatlined, that they they had the same thing, being welcomed by loved ones that previously had been ill and now mm -hmm. were well and similar light and golden thing and uh you know for them a lot of them are religious and it was a, a you know god and yep. the welcoming of heaven but uh it's really incredible how many people have such similar stories and uh stories you know we use loosely for for those that don't believe and yeah and anyway it's it's incredible i have, I have so many more questions so <laughs> when you are facilitating the detachment or the moving along to the light of, of a spirit. Yep. Are there 
stubborn ones. You know, like we, oh, it yeah. sounds like they all have emotions. And yes. so as we all do as humans have different, you know, ways of behaving. Yeah. Are there stubborn ones? How, how does that look? And are, what kind of measures are needed to get those guys to go? Yeah. So when we're, when we're doing this or when I'm doing this work and then whether myself or as a team, um, I'm always calling in like the Archangels. So Archangel Michael for protection and then Archangel Raphael for healing um, and then some of the other Archangels as well. Every, they all have their own specialties. So I'm definitely working with divine guides for assistance as well. So if there is somebody that's a little bit stubborn um, and they're, we're not really having a good conversation and they're not wanting to leave, then I will ask Archangel Michael for his help. And so he can come and, and wrap the spirit up in light and then help detach it and then take it away to go into the light or to wherever it needs to go. For those that don't know about Archangels, what does that mean and how are have you been able to connect with them? Are they are they in support of all mediums or is that like a bridge that has to be built and kind of who are they? Yep, so the Archangels, um, so I guess if you, um, most people know about like say God or divine source and then you have, um, you know, like Jesus, um, Mother Mary, so to speak, and then you have all of these beautiful um, angels, and there are many levels of angels as well. And so they're a, like a pure divine source, very, very powerful, that are always there to um, keep track of us, um, help us when, whenever we need them. Um, one of the, the gentlemen on our team has uh, always says, there are millions of angels, uh, the un unemployed angels, um, and they're just waiting for us to ask them for help because of free will they can't just step in and do something we need to ask them for help um, so and then there's also um, ascended masters um, on those levels as well so ascended masters would be people that are actual they they came in human form and had these beautiful you know wonderful abilities uh, so Jesus is also considered an ascend, ascended master because of all the different miracles that he was able to perform. And then um, now th that they have transformed back into spirit form, then they can come back and help and use those, those expert type of abilities to help wow. on, on people's journey. And when you talked about the like location of hospitals in particular, so there, is there can the spirits go anywhere mm -hmm. and if so how far do they go and why are they so congregated in locations where they've passed like is there some force field that sort of keeps them geographically located or can you kind of speak to that piece oh absolutely yeah so a lot of times if there's a number of spirits that are in a certain location um, it may be something tragic that happened that they they like died immediately and they didn't even realize that they're dead because that's one of the biggest things um, in terms of um, spirits that are kind of like looking for help and will go to the people that uh, they feel are the are lights um, is that they don't know what happened to them so they may not even realize that they're dead and so it's a kind of like having that conversation with them okay do you realize that that, that you're dead first of all and if no, then it's like, okay, well, this is, you know, this is basically what's happened or this is what I'm getting, what happened to you. And so you can't stay because you're gonna end up draining the life force from the person or drain the energy from the person that you are now attached to. And you really should be um, in the light with your family. You would still have access to be able to see what's going on and you can still help, but you're gonna be from a very different vantage point, a different perspective, and you'll be able to do more there than you are actually being um, attached to this person, wow. this energy. Now you had some really special training, and mm -hmm. I, when you were explaining the Institute, uh, the way that you were, I was um, intrigued and I was hoping you could share with the people that are viewing on the type of training that occurs and why the place that you had gone is so renowned. Yep. Um, oh, the uh, for the massage therapy, yes. So the um, I went to the Casey Riley School of Massage, which is down. It's located in Virginia Beach, 
And so Edgar Cayce, it was a very famous psychic and medical intuitive. And this is this was his foundation. And so because of that spiritual piece, when they created the, the massage um, program, they also included that spiritual that so it was literally mind, body, spirit that they covered in the curriculum. When was that? Like year ish? Like how many years ago was the founding of that? So it was in the late 1800s. And the reason I just wanted to highlight that is that we yeah. are still so far behind the concept of yeah. spiritual healing in the process of our medical journeys. Yeah. And I just wanted to like highlight that it's been like more than a hundred years. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, <laughs> <But> absolutely, <anyway. laughs> absolutely. Yeah, because he died in like 1942. Okay. And um, yeah, he would just kind of like go into trance. He would connect with, with the person's energy and it didn't, he didn't have to even be in the same room. Um, he could, uh, at that time, there was like barely any phones um, when he was first got started. So it was all like via letter writing or in person, or maybe somebody would send him a picture um, if they had a photograph of somebody and he would just connect in with their energy and then he would be able to see what was going on with his body and, or that person's body and then get recommendations. Okay, try this, this, and this. So he is the father of holistic medicine. So a lot of his therapies were drugless therapies. They were all very natural things. Well, that doesn't make people money though. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but if there was, if, if somebody needed surgery, then he would say, yes, go ahead and, and have this stuff done. But, and, that, and that's one of the reasons why everything was suppressed was because, okay, so, you know, companies are not going to make money off of it. And so like everything else, um, you know, energy and stuff like that, it's everything gets suppressed. Man, there's just so much that like the average person in the community, myself included, just doesn't know. And also yeah. that like we're, we're constantly evolving. I mean, 35, 40 years ago, we didn't have MRIs. Now we can align hydrogen oxygen molecules up in polarity to discern the difference between the thickness of tissues. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's like <laughs> my smartest point of knowledge. No, but like <laughs> rocket scientists. We got Hugh Hare over at MIT designing bionic integration between nerves that are being tied together and amputated limbs to be able to operate bionic legs. Like yeah. that's just the physical world here. Yeah. Like thinking about the expanse of the universe. And yeah. I mean, I would be so ignorant in de declaring that I could say that there is you know, nothing else or, or being closed minded to it. But I certainly uh, am excited to, to continue to take this onion apart because I feel like there is just yep. so much to it. And I, and I can appreciate the challenge in expressing things in a, a sort of dumbed down way <laughs> when you have a very intricate knowledge. But yeah. for those that are interested in more information, I would very much uh, encourage you to check out uh, the websites uh, for for Anne, uh, and they'll be listed here. And and to just keep an open mind, you can get in touch with us as well if you ever needed to, mm -hmm. uh, to learn more. But uh, just remember that when you're not getting answers and when mm -hmm. things don't feel right and when things aren't making sense that you have you have options you have people to go to that yeah. that you know about different resources different modalities of therapy and that even if they're not the most comfortable for you if there's no risk to it yeah you might as well check it out and and you may really uh go into a pocket that, that needed to be to be looked into. So, Anne, I, I can't believe that the half an hour has flown I by. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate you sharing your knowledge and I look forward to having you back on and, and going oh, yes, into different you. directions because uh, this is a really cool cool topic and, and thank yeah. you for the work that you're doing and uh, and also, you know, stay tuned for everybody that that's um, keeping an eye on, on Anne's progression because she's about to have a big impact in the veteran community doing medical massage for those folks on a, on a yeah. mobile basis. So thank you. Thank you so much, Tina. This has been awesome. Thank and you. Until next time, guys, you know, okay. keep your best foot forward. <laughs>